You've made it. Welcome to the final part of the main course, part 10, where we'll wrap everything up. If you've been following along since the very beginning, you should be very proud because you've done a lot. I'll see you in the next video. When I was putting together this recap video, I kept wanting to add in more and more info. It was very difficult to summarize so many hours of content into just a few slides. But anyway, here are my top 10 takeaways from the entire course, at least from my perspective. Did you have different takeaways? I'd love to hear them. So go ahead, share them in our community. Okay, here they are. Now, in every part of this course, we covered a lot more than what you see here, but I tried to do my best to pull everything into one slide. So in part one, you learned about the seven skills conversion optimizers should have. Hopefully this helped you assess your own skills so that you can figure out what you need to focus on in the future. In part two, I covered what I consider to be the most important information in the entire course, the seven questions every landing page should answer. Hopefully you walked away with a better understanding of what goes into a landing page as you shifted from thinking about landing pages as just a collection of elements to more of the questions that are behind those elements. In part three, we looked at the concept of state change and how that can help someone transform from their before state to their after state. In part four, we covered the topic of message match and how to ensure your ads or emails are congruent to your landing pages. In part five, we looked at the seven elements of design so that you can improve your design skills even if you don't consider yourself a designer. In part six, I showed you my seven step landing page build out process where you can follow step by step or adapt it as you see fit. In part seven, we looked at testing your landing pages and I gave you a four part list of the different things you can test. In part eight, we looked at the differences between qualitative and quantitative analytics. In part nine, as I reviewed real life landing pages, I hope you saw just how important the mobile experience is as we move to a mobile first mindset. And here in part 10, in addition to this recap, I'm gonna cover some additional tools and resources you should bookmark so that you'll have everything you need to build your own pages that convert. Now, before we wrap up, let's dig in a bit deeper on each of these takeaways. In the first part, I shared these seven skills every landing page optimizer should have. Analytics, testing, psychology, usability, design, copywriting, and development. Maybe you're already strong in many of these areas and just wanna improve a few others. That will help you not only become better at landing page optimization, but you'll have a more rounded marketing skill set as well. In part two, we looked at the seven questions every landing page should answer. Here they are again as a quick refresher. Do I quickly understand the big idea? Can it specifically help me? Do I like it? Has it helped others? Do I trust it? Is there something special about it? And can I take action now? The better you do at answering these questions on your landing page for your visitors, the easier it will be to get them to say yes when the time is right. In part three, we looked at a lot of psychological concepts, including the idea of state change. Our job as marketers is to help people go from a less ideal before state to a more ideal after state. We do this by providing the right offer to the right audience at the right time. So you need to know what that state change looks like for your target audience. What is it that they want help with? What is the problem that they're trying to solve and how can you help them? In part four, we covered a lot of things, but one of the tactics was the idea of message match. Do you remember seeing this example of an ad and a landing page that has great message match? If not, I encourage you to go back and review that section. But the general idea is to ensure that when people click through to go to your landing page, they're confident that they're in the right place. You don't want them to be wondering what happened. They should feel like your landing page is a natural continuation of the ad they just saw or the email they just read or however else they got to the page. That's when you know you have a high level of congruency and message match. Moving on to the next takeaway, we talked about the seven elements of design, line, color, size, space, shape, type, and texture. These are your basic building blocks for designing amazing landing pages. So knowing how to use each element is very important. Remember how you can use lines to show direction to keep your visitors scrolling down the page or use space to call attention to something by isolating it. There are so many ways these elements can help you build conversion focused pages. As for the next takeaway, we looked at my seven step landing page build out process in part six. The seven steps are research, write, design, develop, integrate, test, and launch. 
And just because you've launched your landing page, remember, your work is not over. It's up to you to continually monitor, test, and optimize that page in order to achieve incremental growth. In the section called All About Testing, we dove into the world of functional testing, usability testing, and of course, A-B testing. And I shared this helpful model with you that you can use to categorize different types of things you wanna test on your landing pages. You can remember these four things by recalling the acronym FOAM, which stands for Framework, Offer, Audience, and Messaging. Pretty much every A-B test you could think of will fit into one of these boxes. In part eight, Ready to Optimize, we looked at some important metrics and the different places to find them. And a very important distinction that I hope you walked away with is the importance of collecting both qualitative and quantitative data. Remember, quantitative data can tell us what happened, but qualitative data tells you why it happened. Then in part nine, I showed you several real landing page examples and reviewed the pros and cons throughout each of them. This was meant to help you take everything we've covered so far throughout the entire course and put it into practice. And throughout this process, did you notice how I focused on mobile? Mobile is here to stay, and it's quickly taking over the entire web in terms of how people engage with websites and landing pages. So if you haven't done so already, now is the time to finally shift to a mobile-first mindset as you build your landing pages. Then, last but not least, in this current section, I'm going to show you where to find the help and resources you need to take your landing pages even further. From working with freelancers, to getting your landing page questions answered, to exploring new ideas and testing the latest tools, that's what we have ahead in this final part of the course. So speaking of resources, that's what we're up to next, with some tips on where to find freelancers and how to work with freelancers. I'll see you in the next video.